Look at me. Talk to me. What happened? You and him. He said the gun down. And when he said it down, I just thought shit. What happened to the baby's too? Welcome back, family. Today's story has to be the most disturbing true crime case I've ever come across. If you watched the show The First 48, then you're probably familiar with the massacre on Leicester Street, which left the bodies of nine people scattered throughout the home. Six dead, four adults, and two children. Here's an account of what happened that fateful day, pieced together from statements made by the surviving children, court records, as well as friends of the family. Click the link at the end of the video to see one of the surviving children, Cecil Dotson Jr., explain what he saw the day his family was murdered that fateful night. Cecil, Jesse, and an associate, Hollis Seals, had been out purchasing guns from other gang members. There was an argument between the brothers Cecil and Jesse because Jesse wanted ownership of the bigger weapons and Cecil, being the boss of everything, said no. So Cecil stored everyone's cut of the loot and all the weapons at his house at 722 Leicester Street. It appears that he was a leader and everybody followed. The other gang members had respect for him and Jesse was jealous. Once inside the house and still arguing with Cecil, Jesse said, fuck this, just give me my cut of the money and I'm gonna do my own thing. That's why he was led inside the house. They continued to argue but where the fuel came into the already lit flames was when Cecil didn't give Jesse the correct amount of his cut. There was a fight between the two. So while they were in a tussle, the other adults tried to break it up. Jesse pulled out two automatics that were on him, one that he always kept and one that he had just purchased. The argument got so heated and Jesse grabbed Hollis and put a gun in his mouth and demanded that Cecil give him the money. He told him, you owe me, you owe me your fucking life. Hollis's girlfriend, Shindra, started crying while the girlfriend of Cecil, Marissa, started pushing the kids back into the other room because they came out during the argument. He accidentally shot Hollis in the mouth. By this time, Cecil was running to grab his own gun. Jesse turned towards Cecil and shot him several times in the legs. Marissa came and jumped on Jesse and a shot went off hitting her in the stomach. Shindra started towards the doorway and Jesse fired at her knees and legs. So far, nobody's dead at this point but Hollis, who was shot three times, once in the mouth and twice to the chest. Jesse then loaded a different weapon and finished them off. Cecil Dawson was shot once to the head, neck, chest, and four more shots hit him in his left leg. Marissa Williams also died of multiple gunshot wounds, one to the head, chest, stomach, right leg, and left leg. Shindry was shot twice in the legs. He didn't kill her just yet. He wanted to know where the drugs and money was. She told him where the drugs were and afterwards he raped her and suffocated her. Then the poor kids. When he started on the kids, they were hiding. One in the bedroom closet with the baby and the others were in the bathroom. When Jesse realized that the kids, his nephew and infant niece saw him commit the crime, he felt that he had to get rid of the witnesses. He confessed to his mother. The bodies of two of Cecil's children four-year-old Samario and two-year-old Cecil II have both suffered multiple stab wounds. Samario suffers severe blunt force trauma and a stab wound to the chest. Cecil II is stabbed seven times, mostly to the head. The three surviving children, also Cecil's, are nine-year-old Cecil Jr., five-year-old Cedric, and two-month-old Sanaya. Cecil hides in the bathtub for over 40 hours until police arrive on the scene. They find a four and a half inch blade lodged into his skull. Cedric and Sanaya have both suffered stab wounds, but survived the attack, but remain in critical condition for a time. After his unspeakable crime, Jesse left on a bike, but returned to the crime scene and raped Marissa's already dead body, which is where the tears in her buttocks came from. He began to stage the scene to make it appear as a robbery or drug deal gone bad by placing some of the drugs in Cecil's dead hands. He even used Cecil's car to go home and shower at his sister's Nicole's house and, and hide everything. During the investigation, police were at a loss as who the perpetrators were. Because of the level of violence, 
The initial theory was that it had to be gang violence. A hit being ordered on an entire family is not entirely unheard of in the underground world. But just days after the murder, police theory was turned on its head when nine-year-old Cecil Jr. identified the killer responsible, Uncle Jesse. At the time of the murders, he had been out of prison for less than seven months for a different murder. Dodson had already spoken to police a few days prior to being identified as the attacker. At the meeting, he pointed police in the direction of gangster disciple members and encouraged their gang violence theory. Dawson was arrested and charged with six counts of first-degree murder. He later recanted his confession, claiming he had been threatened by police into confessing to the crime. Despite his pleas of innocence, it took jurors less than 90 minutes to convict Jesse of all six charges and sentence him to death. CJ, Cedric, and Tanaya have been in their maternal grandmother's custody since the attack. 